Compressor pre-inspection before installation is really important because you could get the thing installed, do all that work and find out that the windings are shorted or it's the wrong voltage or something like that. This has happened. I've been burned on it. And I know many techs that have been burned on it as well. So we're going to do a pre-inspection on this compressor before we fire it into the machine. Here guys, voltage and phase I think is the most important things we're going to pull off of this because if the voltage is wrong, the phasing's wrong, that compressor can't go in obviously, right? We also have to check our footing to make sure it's the same and make sure our piping configurations are the same. So this one is a roto lock. So that's really important. When you open up the box, make sure it's a roto lock. Make sure it's not sweat and make sure the configuration is the same and the setup is the same. I pull the cover off the box and one thing I've noticed here is that when I pulled the box open, there's damage to this cover. You can see that it's cracked in there, all right? And it's broken here. The cover itself, is also broken now I've reported this back to the supplier I don't think it's going to make much of a difference with the electrical stuff I think this plastic just got damaged which is not a big deal because we can remove this we can unbolt these and we can change that plastic out at a later date I don't think that's a big deal for now but it is noted and we are going to rectify this at some so point this compressor here we want to make sure that we get the new feet and hardware to go along with it because we might have to replace those with the new one maybe not if they're still in good condition and any literature that it comes with we want to read it we want to read up on this literature now this notice here is talking about the sticker where if the compressor overheats basically this compressor will stop pumping and it's got to be cooled down in order for the scrolls to engage back again in order for it to start pumping again so if you guys ever come across a copeland scroll with this on it stating that it will stop pumping when it overheats basically what you got to do is shut it off and let it cool because there's compressors i've come across similar to this where you get to it it's not pumping it's hot come back in 24 hours or if you can cool it off with some water if that's available it will start pumping again maybe something happened and what i've noticed in the past is that if we have a plugged up screen on a tx valve or a dryer or something like that we can't get that refrigerant back through the evaporator to the machine to cool it down this can cause that to happen so it's really important if it's not pumping you don't condemn it you let it cool start it up and find out what is causing the problem check our oil sight glass to make sure we have oil in it because if we have a leak here and we've lost all our oil, that's obviously an issue. So that's one other thing that you want to check now, as well. If you download Copeland Mobile, basically what that allows you to do is scan or input the information manually for this compressor. It'll give you all kinds of information because what we want to do is we want to ohm out the windings to make sure that they're in good condition before we put it in. Also, we have a thermistor in here that our core sense attaches to. So this wire here of the core sense attaches to this thermistor. So if the compressor overheats internally, the core sense will know and it will trigger an alarm. Okay, but if this thermistor is not reading correctly at the given temperature that it's supposed to be at, we could have a problem with the compressor and a problem with the core sense giving us faulty reading. So hopefully Copeland Mobile will give us the information we need to own that out at the temperature that it's currently at at the ambient right now. So we're going to check continuity of the windings real quick and I have the meter set to ohms and we're gonna check there to see if we have continuity. So we have to go across all three phases. So we're gonna go number one and we're reading 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0.6. So they're all the same, which is a good sign. Okay, Copeland Mobile, on Copeland Mobile, as I showed you, when we were scrolling through the images there, it says 1.5 in that range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call Copeland Tech Support and I'm gonna find out if this number that we're reading is okay. I think it is because I've, I've gotten readings like this before on 575 volt three phase compressors. 
So the next thing we want to do is check each leg to the body of the compressor. So this bolt here is actually welded onto the compressor itself. And if we go across these two, you can see we get continuity. So there's continuity through that body. So if we go up to the first one and check OL, OL, and OL. So this compressor looks good. I just want to recheck those numbers with Copeland tech support just to make sure that we are okay for that. So the next thing we want to do is check our thermistor right here. Okay, so as we were saying before, the core sense module plugs into here. All right, and the thermistor, the way it acts is basically like a resistor that acts according to the temperature around it. So the temperature change will affect the resistance reading. So we're gonna check it right now. It's approximately 85 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And that's the other thing we're gonna to have to ask tech support about because I can't find that in Copeland Mobile. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong spot, but we're gonna ask tech support about that. So if I go across this, we are going to read about 280 ohms, 279 point three ohms so we're going to cross reference that with the chart that hopefully tech support has to see what that's supposed to read at 85 degrees and then we're all good all right guys so in summary we want to check the nameplate rating the voltage the phasing is really important but everything on there we want to make sure it matches up okay we want to check our spare parts we want to read any literature that it comes with that i showed you here guys literature that it comes with we want to check our footing we want to check our piping configuration. We want to make sure there's oil in the compressor, okay? And we want to check for any damage, and we found some right here on this case. We want to check our windings, and we also want to check our thermistor for the core sense. And one last thing is we want to make sure that this core sense is set up correctly because there's a lot of dip switches here. I'm going to presume that it's set up like this from the factory, but we need to double check this as well, and that's something else we'll talk to tech support about when we get a hold of them. But anyway, guys, pre-inspection of your compressor before it goes in. Super important so you don't have any issues once it's installed. So I couldn't get a hold of Emerson Tech Support. I guess they were super busy. But I did check those windings again later on in the evening and the, the ohms actually started to, or the resistance actually came up. The ohm reading came up in the cooler weather. So maybe in the app it was taken at um, a certain temperature perhaps, but that compressor was installed and it's running and it's working. Anytime I see a three-phase compressor, it ohms out the same across all three phases, it's usually fine. Now, as far as the thermistor, I couldn't get an actual chart that matched up with temperature, okay? But what I did find online, and Trevor Matthews from Emerson also texted me um, a sheet that showed that anything above 4.5K ohms, so four, four and a half thousand ohms, we shut down on high temperature. When we come back down below 2.5k ohms, that's when it starts working again. So we were below that, we were at around 280 ohms. So that was also fine. So moral of the story guys, check your compressors before you put them in because you could have bad windings off, off the hop. You could have a faulty thermistor off the hop. You could have different piping configurations where you're gonna now have to do a little bit of repiping because the compressor doesn't fully match up to the previous model number. That's that's the moral of the story and that's the message here guys. Happy HVACing.